Hello, I'm Dr. Balaji, junior resident from MG Medical College, now in Mumbai, and my topic is Phacomatosis Revisited, a pictorial review. Introduction, neurokidney syndromes or phacomatosis are a heterogeneous group of congenital disorders primarily involving structures derived from the embryological neuroectoderm. All of these syndromes involve the central nervous system, peripheral nerves, skin, and other systems. There are about 20 to 30 disorders classified as neurokidney syndromes. The aim is to review the role of MRI as a method of imaging to diagnose patients with neurokidney syndromes. And the objectives are to illustrate the MRI imaging findings of few common neurokidney syndromes and to review imaging and clinical features of common presentation of phacomatosis. This is a retrospective study done in MJ Medical College over a period of six months from June 23 to December 23, and a total of 18 patients were included and all were scanned on Toshiba 1.5 Tesla MRI machine. These are the cases. Moving on to the first case, we see multiple areas of flare hyperintense signal involving the spinium of corpus callosum on the right side, bilateral ganglio-capsular regions, midbrain on the right side, periventricular area of pons. This is a case of focal altered signal intensity in a, ca in a case of neurofibromatosis 1. Moving on to the next case, here we see a small, rounded, relatively well-defined lesion involving uh, likely arising from the medulla oblongata, extending into the left cerebellum medullary system, which appears hyperintense on flare images and shows no restricted diffusion. And on post-contrast study, there is no post-contrast enhancement seen. This is a low-grade tumor, likely a low-grade glioma in a case of neurofibromatosis 1. Moving on, we see a multiple variable-sized T2 hyperintense lesions extending from the skull base uh, to the uh, up to the anterior mediastinum involving the entire left side of the neck, uh, which shows T2 hyperintensity with central hypointense uh, areas, suggestive of plexiform neurofibroma. These show mild to moderate enhancement on post contrast study. The same patient on sagittal image shows showed a severe typhotic deformity at the level of C2, C3, C4, and acute angulation of uh, at the level of C3 causing spinal canal compression and spinal canal stenosis. The same patient showed uh, multiple T2 hyperintense uh, lesion involving both sides of the ribs, along the both sides of the ribs, which showed mild to moderate post-contrast enhancement, suggestive of intercostal nerve neurofibroma. And also we see the mediastinal extent of the neurofibroma. Moving on to the next case, here we see diffuse thickening of the skin and subcutaneous uh, tissues of the entire foot and the distal aspect of the leg, which shows multiple stir hyperintense uh, lesions with hypointense foci, suggestive of plexiform neurofibroma of foot in a case of neurofibromatosis 1. Moving on to the next case, here we see a well-defined extra-axial lesion in bilateral cerebellopontine region extending into the internal acoustic meatus, which is uh, suggestive of bilateral acoustic schwannomas in a case of neurofibromatosis 2. The next case, here we see there's a cystic lesion with a mural enhancing nodule in the upper half of the spinal uh, cord in the cervical region. And also we see there are two hyper, uh, hyper enhancing nodules just below the cystic lesion, which is suggestive of a mangioblastoma involving the spinal cord in a case of von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. Moving on to the next, uh, this is the same patient in which we, we saw that there was the bilateral cerebellar uh, hyperenhancing foci, keeping in consistent with cerebellar hemangioblastoma in case of von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. The same patient had T2 hyperintense area in the uh, uh, in Peter's part of the left temporal bone, which showed subtle post-contrast enhancement, which is a keeping in consistent with endolymphatic sac tumor in a VHL case. Moving on to the next case, here we see that there is a, a T2 hypointense lesion involved and flare hyperintense lesion involving the frontal horn of right lateral ventricle. Uh, in a case of tuberous sclerosis, this is a diagnostic of subependymal giant cell astrocytoma. We could also see uh, from the same patient that there were discrete and confluent T2 flare hyperintensities in uh, bilateral, frontal, and parietal occipital regions, 
uh, which is suggestive of cortical and subcortical tubers in a case of tuberous sclerosis. Moving on to the next case, here we see prominence of the cortical sulci along with enlargement of the subarachnoid space in the T2 image, uh, along with subtle flare hyperintensity at the level, uh, along the cortical sulci in left parieto-occipital lobes and uh, mild thickening of the ipsilateral choroid plexus. And uh, in the inversion recovery image, we can see uh, the volume loss, well appreciated. And on post-contrast study, there is a serpentine pile enhancement along the cortical sulci and gyri of the left parietal lobes, parieto-occipital lobe, with thickened and enhancing chora ipsilateral choroid plexus, uh, suggestive of Sturge Weber syndrome. Moving on to the next case, here we see that there is prominence of the cortical sulci with enlargement of the subarachnoid space, showing pile enhancement along the cortical sulci and gyri of the right frontoparietal lobes, suggestive of right sided hemiatrophy with pyelangiomatosis in the case of Sturge Weber syndrome. In the next case, we see that there is a left sided uh, hemiatrophy uh, along with uh, T1, T2 flare hypo intense signal along the left parieto occipital lobes which shows blooming on GRE, suggestive of calcification. On post-contrast study, we see that there is a pile in, uh, enhancement along the cortical sulci and gyre of the left parieto occipital loop with thickened and enhanced choroid plexus, suggestive of Sturge Weber syndrome, again with calcification. So, a uh, brief discussion. These are the common neurocutaneous syndromes which we encounter. And uh, so, the, this is a table summarizing uh, all the uh, salient features uh, of uh, the same. And uh, just to highlight a few points, all of these uh, neurocutaneous syndromes which are illustrated so far is an autosomal dominant inheritance uh, uh, apart from Sturge Weber syndrome, which is sporadic in inheritance. Apart from that, there are multiple cutaneous manifestations of these neurocutaneous syndrome, which plays a major role in diagnostic criteria of the same. And uh, to conclude, pegomatosis group includes nearly 30 and more individual syndromes. Although genetic testing is available, manifestation of these syndromes cover a wide range. Imaging plays an important role in screening early identification of abnormalities, and follow-up of lesions in previously diagnosed cases. Radiologists should be familiar with these syndromes to guide appropriate treatment and prognosis. Thank you.